Hi and welcome to another iPad calligraphy video. Today we are going to look at the clone tool in Procreate 5. So when Procreate 5 was released, there were so many new amazing features such as Brush Studio, Animation Assist and Color Harmony. The clone tool was included in that update, but it kind of took a back seat compared to all the other amazing features. So I want to really take a good look at the clone tool today and show you how you can use it not only to remove any blemishes in your photos, but also to create something really creative. So we're going to create some lettering in Coffee Foam by using the clone tool to paint the pixels of the foam around the lettering. So this is the end result of what we'll be making. We'll start with our image. Now the background is from Unsplash. This is a free website. If you don't know about Unsplash, definitely check it out. It is amazing for image resources. Some incredible photographers donate their images. Good if you use them to just give it credit. So this is by Nathan Dumio and I'll leave a link in the description so that you can find this exact image. It's also really useful for this particular project because it has a nice balance of foam and darker coffee areas. So as you saw in the previous image, we use the darker area for the lettering itself and then we're going to bring the foam onto the borders in the outline and move that foam into position. So we needed that balance. If you have another image you wanted to use, that's totally fine. But keep in mind that you do need enough to sample the area. So let's look at how the clone tool works. I've just created some lettering earlier to just save a bit of time. So once you have your layout as you like it, I'm using a bright blue color so I can really clearly see what's going on. And I'm going to turn the opacity right down to about 40% and the lettering is still in layers. If you have any adjusting to do, do that before we start using the clone tool and you'll find the clone tool within the adjustments panel and then clone. What we need to do is work on the same background layer. So that's important to know. So get everything where you like it first. Then you'll see once we activate the clone tool, we've got this round circle. This is telling us the area that the pixels are going to be sampled from. I did this once before and have learned some lessons that I can share with you for that so that you don't make the same mistake I did because I started on the foam area and I moved all the way over with the foam, started on the second word even and bringing the foam in. And then I realized I was running out of the darker coffee area to sample for the second word. The first step really is to make sure that all of the lettering is in that darker area. So you're just basically positioning this in order to pick up the, those pixels. And then we're gonna come in here and paint. So I've got an airbrush set at the moment for the clone tool, but you can actually change this to whatever you like. You'll see when you tap on this, you get access to your whole brush library. So you can actually choose any tool that you like. So I'm actually going to go into the, the brush that I used to create this initially, which is the copper plate brush and I will just turn it up a little bit. That's looking good. So now I can actually come in and if you can see my hands in the way here a little bit, but if you can see that, I'm gonna move it over here. That sample image is moving simultaneously with your pencil movement. That's so that you can pick up those pixels and so it looks realistic. But what you find you'll have to do is to just move it back up as you reach the bottom. So you might not be able to make sort of one consistently smooth transfer because you'll see I started to get a bit of the foam there. So I need to move this down further in order to get a little bit more runway in that area. So it just takes a little bit of fiddling around, but what you'll get is a really clean sample and it'll look exactly like the coffee foam image. So I'll just speed this bit up so we can get to the next stage. Right, so if I turn off my coffee layer, you can see that those areas that were sitting in the foam and light before are now the darker shade. So that's just what we want, that's perfect. But now I'm going to go to the second word, time. So I'm gonna go back to my clone tool, just into the adjustments menu and move my sample area so that it's in a good spot and continue with the second word. Okay, so now turning off time, you can see that the area there is now in that darker coffee color. The only thing I missed was the little full stop. You have to reactivate your clone tool as soon as you click on something else, you just need to activate it again. And something to be careful of is when you drag this little sample area, quite often you'll see you'll get a little speck of the sample when you're dragging. So just be cautious of that. Just as long as you're aware of it, just undo that 
action. It's a good idea to keep backups as you go as well. This would be a good point to do that. So I'm just going to duplicate this layer and now we have that preserved at that point and I'm going to carry on with the duplicated layer that we just made. So the next step that we want to do if you remember is to bring the foam around the, the border areas and then we can enhance it with bubbles where we want to. So we'll go back to the clone tool and again I'll just speed this up for the sake of time. So it definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry too much. You can always come back and refine it later. All we're doing is just kind of getting a general outline and you can use a very scattered stroke. So you can sort of make it so that your stroke isn't completely straight. So don't worry too much if you're starting to hit the lines. We will come back at the end and just refine the bulk uh, center bit of the lettering just to make sure that that's nice and clean. At this stage, it's just really getting the outline in the foam. And when you get to a little area that you need to reduce your brush size, don't forget you've got these controls here. So we can turn the brush size down so that you get a smaller stroke. You can also turn the opacity down as well if you want just a more subtle effect. I'm using full strength at the moment just to get the um, full sense of it. But we will, when we come into the finer details a bit later, we will reduce the opacity so that we can get more of a blended look. Okay, so we've got the bulk of the word outlined now. So you can see we've got the, um, the foam on the borders, the froth. So that's looking pretty good. We can just um, roughen that up in a minute because it's a little smooth at the moment. But remember, we'll come back and refine it. That's just what we want for the moment. We just wanna outline the word so we can turn off our reference layer and then come in and refine. So I'm gonna come in here and do the second word now. But before doing that, I'm gonna create another duplication of the layer so that we've got it back up there. Swipe to the left and choose duplicate. And now I'm gonna carry on using my third copy of the layer. Okay, so we've got our second word done now. So if I turn off the lettering layer, you can see coffee time written in the foam. So we're pretty much there, but what I'd like to do is just tidy some areas. You can see when you zoom in that there's some areas that aren't really blending together. So it's nice to sort of try and make those work as well as possible. And also we're gonna sample some of these bubbles and just bring them into the areas that are a little more condensed just for um, better effect and make it a bit more realistic. So this is really just up to um, your own preference. And this is a point I think I'd turn down the strength just to get a bit more of a blended look in these areas. And you can also change your brush as well. So I might go into an air, more of an airbrush. So in the airbrushing set, you could choose like a medium airbrush and that's gonna give us more of a feather on the edge, which just blends it a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it gave you some ideas about some creative ways that you can use the clone tool. I would love to see what you create. Tag me on Instagram or leave a link on the blog and I'd love to check out what you create. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with anyone that might be interested and I shall see you next time.